So Ms. Blur and I are back from CES 2025, and after about 49 miles of walking, we did hit a lot of booths in the whole smart home world that fits this channel. First up, I hit Shelly. Shelly has got a brand new lineup of the Gen 4 products out, which is pretty cool, especially if you remember my interview from last year when they said they weren't going to do Zigbee. Well, that definitely has changed this year. The Gen 4 actually from the same module. It's going to stick with all the different sizes and colors so you're not very confused since everybody knows all the things already. That same exact product, you will get the option to pick your Wi-Fi, Matter, or even Zigbee from the very same device. And you know, of course, I asked, will it do it at the same time? With the multi-protocol products, you'll provision everything through, you know, you'll connect to it with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to do the initial setup. But when you want to use either Zigbee or Matter as the protocol, you'll basically turn off Wi-Fi. And then when you need to make a change, you'll re-enable Wi-Fi and go in and make the change. And then you'll go back to the protocol. So which that's our version of the ESP32. Yeah. We're the only you know, company in the world that gets to use this product. And for us, it's all there. So it's no, it's no significant burden for us to turn it on. Customers have asked, so we just make it available. Because I, I know you're a huge fan of Tasmoda. And somebody's going to somebody's going to try to reverse engineer it. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if they figured something out. But remember, it's one radio. Yeah. Now, right. the chips have two radios. Right. So maybe somebody could figure it out. Well, it's but it's not something that we're going to put into because it's not a good user experience. Right. So yeah, that's Doug. I finally got to meet Doug for the first time. So awesome to see the excitement behind all the Shelly guys and everything. They are coming out with a new Gen 4 plug for the North America market. There is a screen display. They only had the EU one there, and it runs off of 24-volt DC, or oddly, the USB-C was on the side. So, But they're supposed to have it set up for doing the U.S. market later, but we'll see if that comes to light. Now, of course, I had to go hit my guys and gals from Third Reality, such an awesome company. They got a little bit bigger booth this year, and they're coming out with some great products, some they didn't even have there. It's always cool to talk with their engineer. He's so excited about the Home Assistant journey and all the different users. It's great to see that, and they're still sticking with their thing of using AA and AAA batteries and all their battery-powered sensors. Now, come to that, they did give me to try out their new battery-powered presence sensor that runs on three double A's. It's Zigbee, and there's actually buttons on the top, if you can see there, to change the sensitivity or reset it, etc. It's MM Wave. I haven't had a whole lot of time to test it to really say things about it, but then the cool port, they also have their Matter keyboard. That may be hard to see on this camera, but it is LED backlit, and you may be going, well, what the hell is a Matter keyboard? It still hooks up USB to your computer, but then you have function keys that you can trigger Matter automations that works Matter over Wi-Fi. I did pair it straight into Home Assistant, and you can already do functions right off of to turn off the lights and everything else. It's just one of those KISS principle items. Now, I did ask him about what new stuff they had coming out. Supposedly, they will have some US-based Zigbee light switches and also receptacles for the wall, which are pretty, pretty cool because there's really none out there that I like for the receptacle in the US market. Now, up next, Akaria. Akaria has been doing some rather interesting stuff as well. They have a new suite of like US light switches, even a dimmer, multi-channel stuff. And the cool part is at pairing mode, you can pick whether you want to put them in thread mode or you can put them in Zigbee mode. I thought that was pretty nice because you could buy it now, keep it into Zigbee. And then if you do want to finally jump into the mess of things of thread, then you can use the same devices. Just repair them up and put them in thread mode. Now, the really awesome part is their new G5 Pro camera. Not sure if I'm supposed to be showing it yet. I won't show the actual content, but it was actually on the floor at CES for everyone to see. But this is the camera itself. And it, this is the PoE model. And yes, it does have RTSP. So you can throw it into Frigate, BI, et cetera. And then it's even a thread border router right in the camera itself. So you can go put all your sensors outside or wherever around the house. And it will do all the thread things too. That's pretty awesome. And 
it does have some internal storage and even the cool part is like all the facial detections packet detection all that happens internally on the camera itself and not having to utilize the cloud. So look for more for this one as I dig through this one and we're gonna do a bunch of testing like you know the package detection stuff that we showed here. Of course we've covered my motion before with all the lawnmower so I had to stop back by. They have come out with a new model that gets rid of the big pain point that I had and that was having to train the whole thing and draw around the perimeter of the area of the yard. It has the new camera analysis that will automatically draw out your yard. I'm not sure how well that works. Maybe it will end up getting one if they like us to review that again. They have another mini model for like really small yards. Maybe that would work out for my backyard, but then it would mow slower, but who cares? And the community definitely changed up things from my opinion on what my motion is doing because they were making six blade discs to go on the bottom of the Lubas. And now look at the new Luba. Now you have six blades on the bottom as well with these weird orange bumpers. Not sure what I have to say about those. Now they are getting into the pool cleaners as well, I, but they didn't have a whole lot of data about them. So uh, I just took some video and called it a day. Of course, SwitchBot had a weird booth for me. Um, they talked about this arm that's gonna be on this base that drives around and picks up things, but the arm wasn't there with the robot. Um, the base could still drive around with the use of the vacuum and they had a camera. I'm not sure where this kind of fits in. It was quirky, it was weird. Then you could put the air purifier on top of it, which is a table, but then it would drive around and clean parts of the room. I'm not sure how much that is a problem for di different places. Um, they also had their video doorbell with their little internal uh, intercom, but I did ask them about that. And currently there is no plans. It does not have RTSP. So probably will not be covering that on this channel because of the lack of being able to use it locally. And I guess speaking of all the vacuums, there were so many vacuums. See, everybody and their dog has a vacuum. Dream had their new deal there. I didn't follow too much on it. It just seemed to get up some different small steps on the X50. Um, Robo Rock had something that was very gimmicky that a lot of us laughed at watching was the little arm that pops out of the unit and supposed to pick up your socks because you know, you're a bad man and leave your socks everywhere. But just pick up your stuff before the vacuum runs around. I don't know what it would do. What if your dog takes a massive dump in the living room and then it goes to pick that up? Um, I'll just stay with my regular vacuums. I don't need an arm picking things up. Of course, we went to the Real Link booth to see what new they had there. Not a whole lot of new things. Their big thing was the Wi-Fi 16 megapixel Duo 3. The Duo 3 came out last year in the PoE model, but maybe people were waiting for the Wi-Fi model on that one. I'm not a big fan of Wi-Fi cameras just due to, you know, the instability and blocking up Wi-Fi. And then also you could block those if you wanted to really not have to um, get recorded. But I guess it could record locally. I'm just not a fan. Maybe that's a big renter thing. They had their other, they released their Atlas cameras that are continuous recording. And, and then they had some new LTE camera. It was supposed to be 24 seven recording. I've had mixed results with one I've been playing with in the backyard for the past month or two. Maybe we'll see something on that in the future, but not a really a whole else lot. Maybe the Real Link Pro hub for dealing with their battery powered cameras that does have HDMI out. So it kind of fixes that of being able to see your battery powered cameras locally, which you really don't see anybody else doing that as being able to have local control on your battery cameras. So there's a plus to that. We did stop by shortly to Slyvox. That was that little TV that OG had under the water in the bathtub. Had to see their beautiful like 120, 110 inch outdoor TV that they had water spraying down on. It was pretty damn bright, but uh, I doubt we'll get to review that one. AI Dot, if you know them from Ladarson or also as Linkine, no, there's no Linkine Zigbee stuff coming back. They've killed that off. They've all gone into like Matter, Matter over Wi Fi, and then some thread stuff. They actually reused some of the same exact cases I saw. It looks like the same Linkine plugs, but they had Matter stickers on the side. Their big thing is they're jumping into the Walmart stores with their HDMI sync boxes for 
being able to put in your stuff to put the, all the LEDs around the outside of your TV, um, if you're really into doing that. And the big thing I took away from the AI Dot booth was they're gonna have a $5 Matter Smart Bulb straight in Walmart. That's pretty damn slick. It definitely undercuts some of the pricing we've seen, especially in the Matter world. Ugreen is back with some of their NASs, and yes, that's NAS, in a S. I know it sounds like something else, they're back with some of theirs, and they do have the new Intel AI chips, and yes, everything was AI there. It's pretty much the same, it's just different processors in them, but it, maybe that would be something more we could run some Home Assistant LLM stuff on if we can get our hands on one. That might be pretty cool to see how that turns out. Stop by the Geekum booth. The Geekum is pretty cool to see what they're doing, and... They had a Qualcomm one, which was pretty slick and had some microphones on it. And they even had one showing the board. I'm really curious to see how the Qualcomm chipsets would work with Windows and other operating systems, but I doubt we'll get anything soon from Geekum. They seem to have ghosted us in the past after I had an issue with one of their mini PCs and they stopped responding to me. But hey, Geekum, if you want to reach out again, you know where the email address is at. Of course, if you've seen my other little video, I had really awesome time with the Vegas Loop. I did a little research on it, and it's supposed to be like, you know, Elon's going to do like 68 miles of stuff and different stuff to all the different hotels from the airport, which is badly needed to be able to get transportation easily from the airport to the Strip. Be awesome to see when they finished all that stuff up. Uh, it's exciting to see that they're going to switch into some 12 passenger cars and Jump around makes it so much easier, especially when there's gridlock, because, yeah, sometimes it's just faster to walk because you can walk past all the cars and buses and gridlock going to CES. Or you can just take the monorail like we did a lot. And um, but then those pack off as well. The other really weird, awesome thing that I know I'll never get to look at is the flying car that went into or if you want to call it, a, looks like more like a drone and it was like a quadcopter that went into this big van. And I think the guy was saying you didn't have to have a general pilot's license. You did not have to have a helicopter license. And uh, I guess you had to bring a whole lot of money as well. And one thing I learned from this year's CES is watch out for the hype. They hyped up that NVIDIA keynote with all their new crazy product video cards and everything. We were idiots and went and waited in line for hours and hours to go see the keynote. And yeah, it was so bad. We left halfway through or maybe even before that. AI, 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 oh, and AI makes you wonder if why the stock price dropped right after that announcement. I say no more. AI, AI. Now, if you want to look around, see some other stuff, just weirdness, I'll see what other pictures and videos I can throw towards the end of the video. But I guess my closing thoughts of CES itself, the best time I had was the Home Assistant get together. It wasn't even at CES. We all got together. It was cool to talk to Paulus and Frank. I saw Dr. Z's, the Home Assistant podcast guys. Uh, who else was there? Um, there's Apollo Automation Sensor guys. It was pretty awesome to talk shop. We were supposed to get there at like six and only stayed till eight but they turned the roach lights on at 1030 and kicked everybody out. So no one wanted to leave. It was pretty awesome to see everyone, you know, just chit chat and talk and shop and really excited to see the future of what happens with everything with Home Assistant in the year of 2025. And no, they didn't hate on us too bad about our voice assistant PE review. Actually, one of the guys there actually kept saying how much he loved it. Other than that, my closing thoughts on CES was because I went last year as well, and I just felt you could feel the things of the economy this year. There was not big, you know, crazy booths and big, crazy things. Everything was kind of shrunk down this year. Even Tuya didn't have their big lighted sign that I wanted to take a picture of and from, and I just took a picture in front of their like little, you know, vinyl sign instead. I guess that's just the way things are. People are, you know, not spending as much money. 
Um, hopefully in the future, we'll see that come back around and we can go see that craziness we get from CES. Even talking with some of the bus drivers, rideshare, loop drivers, they were all saying everybody was saying the same thing, that just CES was kind of smaller and the things weren't as crazy as it was in the previous year. So it's unfortunate to see, but hopefully it will get better as things move on. Now, of course, this was long winded and everything, but you remember that saying of uh, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? That definitely is not true with all the cell phone cameras out there. Even the iFixit guy had fun at the airport. Four lines are two up in the line, and this is already a congested area. We have a lot of people going out. Oh, that's on video. Make sure that you are in the proper group as not to crowd the boarding area. I'd like to thank all of you for liking, subscribing, viewing, using the links, doing all the things because we don't do this YouTube channel for a profit, but that does allow us to go experience CES and we do appreciate it. And hopefully you've enjoyed some of the content that we brought back to show you. Thank you again.